Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to St. Peter's Lutheran Church on this Lord's Day. There's announcements in your bulletin. I hope that you'll take a little time to look through all of them. I'm going to highlight a few of them. You may have noticed as you came in today that there's a, a little book fair that we have set up. Augsburg Fortress, it's a, it's a great deal because they send us to the church this box of books and the church gets to keep that box of books for our uses in children's ministries here. But then also we get to sell these books to you at discounted prices. So it's a good time for you to do your Christmas shopping. If you have children or grandchildren who might like to um, have, have some more books in their library, there's order forms out there. You just fill out the order form. There's examples of many of the books, not all the books that are on the the list are out there, but um, take a look, and if you see something you like, please order. You can give the order forms to me or put them on the desk in the office. We will have that book, that book fair up for a, a few Sundays still. Uh, other announcements, the fall and winter rummage sale is coming up at the end of the month. We're taking donations for that. It's a good time to clean out your closets and bring over any donations that you have. This, uh, today, there's coffee fellowship after worship. And at 10.30 today is the blessing of the animals service. I know a lot of our Sunday school kids are planning to come to that, but everybody is welcome to come. If you have a pet, you want to run home and get your pet and bring him back. Or we've said, too, that um, it's fine to bring a picture of an animal or a stuffed animal. But we do this service and we rem- remember that God loves all the creatures and how especially pets are such a blessing to all of our lives. So it'll be a fun, a fun, brief service, but hope you can come. And then after that, there's all sorts of fun stuff happening too. There's going to be, there's a picture booth. You can get a picture taken with your pet. There's snacks because you got to have snacks, right? So, and um, yes, hope you can be there. This week, Wednesday, there's quilting at 9 a.m., morning Bible study at 9 a.m., confirmation class at, from 3.45 to 6 that day, church council at 6.30, and choir practice also here at 6.30 that day. Are there other announcements from the congregation? Well, then let's stand as we begin worship this morning. We begin with the litany of praise that is in your bulletin. Most high, all-powerful, good Lord, yours are the praises, the glory, the honor, and all blessing. Be praised, my Lord, through all your creatures, especially through Brother Son, who brings us the day and give life through him. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Moon and the stars, in heaven you formed them clear and precious and beautiful. Praise be you, my Lord, through brother wind, through the air, cloudy and serene, and every kind of weather through which it gives a sincere greeting. Praise be you, my Lord, through brother fire, through whom you get, through whom you light the night. He is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Blessed are those who endure in peace, for by you, most high, they shall be crowned. Praise and bless my Lord, and give him thanks and serve him with great humility. Let's sing, Just As I Am.
The prayer of the day you'll find on the front of your Celebrate insert. Please pray with me. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right. And by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is from Isaiah 5, 1 through 7. Let me sing for, your, for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleaned it of stones and planted with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it, and he hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I tell, will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. I shall not be, it, shall, it shall not be pruned or honed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the people of Judah. And his pleasant planting, he expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Wow. We'll read the psalm responsibly. Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. He cleared the ground for it, and it took root and filled the land. He stre stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. The wild boar of the forest have ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Behold and tend this vine. Preserve your right hand has planted. Second reading is from Philippians 3, 4b through 14. Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained these, this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal of, for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Jesus Christ. Here ends the reading.
Holy Gospel is from St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. I invite you to read this word with me. Jesus said to the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at a harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, They realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the word of the Lord. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And I invite any children who are here to come up for a children's message. Come on down. I have a book that I want to share with you today. So maybe if you want to sit by me so you can see the book here, that would be nice. Excellent. This was actually one of the books that we have in our book fair out there. And I thought it was perfect because we're going to have the blessing of the animals today. And what does this say? God made the animals. Yep, God made the animals. And it has, yeah, and it has eyeballs that you can look through. All right. Let's, yep, there you go. Just like that. All right, so let's see what it has to say. Maybe some of you could help me with it even. So let's see. Owen, what does that say? God made the monkeys who climb, the, who climb in the trees. God made the monkey who climbs in the tree. Do you no want to be... No, to you, no you're going to be the monkey. There we go. Looks cute. Okay. <laughs> now, let's see. Do you want to do that one? God made the fish who swims in the seas. God made the fish who swims in the seas. There you are. Yep. Excellent. Okay. Dawson, you want to do one? God made the panda who eats bamboo shoots. Yeah, so let's see what the panda looks like on you. Oh, that looks good. Excellent. All right. You want to do this? God made the owl who hoos and hoots. Hoos and hoots. How do you look as an owl? Oh, you look very good as an owl. Yeah, excellent. All right. Who's back here? Oh, you read? can you read that? God made the God made the giraffe who stretches so 
tall. Tall. All right. You could be a good giraffe, couldn't you? There you are. Yeah, excellent. Hey, Owen. Do you want to do one? God made the hedgehog. And who you want to put down the hedgehog eyes? eyes? Let's see you in hedgehog uh, eyes. And mom, oh, it. it matches your shirt, mom, too. Get the hedgehog also runs very, very fast. Yes. Sonic. Oh, Eli, do you know what that is? It's Geico. <laughs> Geico. <laughs> it's chameleon, yeah? Okay, so it says, God made the chameleon who hides in plain sight. Let's see how you look as a chameleon. Oh, Where do you very go? nice, very nice. Where do you like go? Drew, come on over here. What does that say? God made the bat who flies at night. God made the bat who flies at night. Thought, there you go. I Excellent. Thought, I thought all bats were Dracula. No, no. There are vampire bats. Mm -hmm. Did everybody get one? Yeah. Now it's time for I get to do one. God made the parrot yellow, green, and blue. How do I look? Do I look good? God bless all birds. Yeah? Yeah, there we go. Mom, no, wait, Mom. Let's just say that's a dove. A dove? Yeah. Okay, now let's read this together. God made the animals, and God made you. Let so. me do it. I didn't get to do eyes. Okay, you can do the eyes. So, yeah, so this book reminds I'm us <laughs> that all creatures, God made all creatures, God made all of you, and God made our pets that we love so much and farm animals. Do any of you have pets? Do some of you have pets? We have yeah. Two we have a dragon. Yeah. You have some used to. Yeah. You have some pets. Do you love them? Yeah. And God tells us to take good care of those creatures, right? Because they become part of our families, don't they? Yeah. We have a dragon. We have a dragon. Yes. Bearded dragon. A bearded dragon. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> So today, as we remember St. Francis and his love for the animals and our love for the animals, let's pray together, okay? Dear God, thank you for this day. I thank you for these children. And God, today we think of all of the, the creatures that you have brought into our lives and how much joy they do bring us. Companions, they help protect us. They bring us such joy and help us to be good at taking care of them. And so, God, we lift up these prayers and all of the prayers in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks for coming up. There's a little treat there if you want one. It's okay. What? Can I just put this on the bench? Yeah, perfect. The Lord be with you. When I was reading the scripture for today from Philippians and how Paul writes that he counts all of his accomplishments, all of his credentials as nothing compared to the joy that he felt in knowing Christ, I was reminded of the story of St. Francis of Assisi. Are you familiar with his story? I wasn't terribly familiar with it, so I, I did a little bit of research this week. And I read about how he was born the son of wealthy parents. And in fact, his father chose his name. He wanted to name him after the country of France because France was where um, his father had earned all of his wealth as a, a merchant selling cloth. And Francis grew up, he was very intelligent, and he grew up to, to become a merchant like his father. But mostly he liked to have a good time. He wanted to party, spend time with his friends, and dance. That's what he was interested in doing. And he was really, really interested in making a good name for himself. He wanted people to like him. He wanted, and then a war broke out, and so he had to go to war, but he saw this as a great opportunity to get glory, military glory. He's going to have some great conquest. 
But what happened was he was captured and he was imprisoned for a year. And after he was imprisoned, he went back home and he was very sick, very sick for a long time. And he finally came out of the sickness, but he was a changed man after that. He couldn't understand why no longer did all the things that he used to enjoy bring him joy anymore. He didn't want to go out dancing and partying. He, he didn't know who he was anymore. He didn't care about all of his possessions he had. And, and so then he began to spend some time in prayer to figure out, well, what does God want for my life now? What, what am I supposed to do? He prayed and he prayed. He spent a lot of time alone. And as he prayed and as he spent this time alone, answers began to come to him. The first one was that God wanted him to rebuild this church that had been become really dilapidated, broken down. And so he began to work on this church, pouring all of his energy into rebuilding it. And meanwhile, his parents are thinking, our kid is nuts because, you know, he's got this family business that he, we need him to be a part of. They begged him to come back, you know, work in the family business, you know, enjoy the wealth that our family has. But Francis didn't want any of it anymore. He said, I've realized that from now on, my only father is my father in heaven. And so he gave all of his possessions that his parents had ever given him, they gave, he gave them back to his parents. And he committed his life to wandering and preaching and singing praise to God and living in poverty. He took to heart Jesus' command to his apostles when Jesus said, Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or don't take two tunics or sandals. He existed just with what he had on his back, and he went around preaching and fixing up old churches. Well, eventually, over time, other people began to see this light in Francis, and they wanted to follow that way, too. And so they would come and learn from Francis, and then they would, he would send them out to go and to preach and teach the way of, of Jesus. Francis saw poverty as this holy thing. When his followers would meet someone who was poorer than them, they would gladly take off the clothes off of their back and give it to them. He, he told them to treat coins as if they were pebbles in the road. Just leave them there, worth nothing. And when the bishop began to show horror at, at the simplicity of the lives of Francis and the followers, um, Francis said, if we had any possessions, we should need weapons and laws to defend them. Possessing things, it was the death of love for Francis. And he reasoned, he said, what, could you do, what can you do to a man who owns nothing? You can't starve a fasting man. You can't steal from someone who doesn't have money. And you can't ruin someone who hates prestige. He was truly free. In time, there were so many following Francis that he decided to write down um, the rules of their life together and then went to the Pope to get those rules approved and the Pope gave his blessing and then they continued their work. And he did a lot of preaching. One of the most infamous stories about St. Francis is that he believed so strongly that everyone needed, every creature needed to hear the word of God that he preached a sermon to a flock of birds once. He was known for being able to communicate with animals in ways that most people couldn't. And so that's one of the reasons that the Catholic Church uh, has named him a patron saint of animals. So these were the hallmarks of his life, and there were many, many stories about him, this living in poverty, and especially at the end of his life, he knew great suffering. And it was during that time that he wrote the Canticle of the Sun, which we used as our opening litany today. Beautiful. 
He died on October 3rd of 1226 at 45 years of age. So like St. Paul, Francis found his joy in Christ Jesus. He found his identity in Christ Jesus. He found his meaning and his purpose in Jesus. That prayer of St. Francis that's on the front of our bulletin today, it wasn't written by St. Francis, but it was written in the spirit of him and how he found this deep well of peace because of Jesus in his life. And so that brings me to a question that I want to ask you today. Where do we find our peace? I think it's a very good question. Maybe especially these days when it seems like there's so little peace. When we hear news reports yet again of mass shootings yet again, again and again. You know, the shootings at Columbine High School back in 1999 happened just the month before I graduated from seminary, or from, yeah, seminary. And I remember, you know, we were all so horrified, and it was such a strange thing to hear. You know, we couldn't believe that that, that kind of thing could happen. And I had no idea then that over the years of my ministry, again and again and again and again, these things would happen. And I'd need to write sermons that would point to hope in the midst of times like that. In high schools, in elementary schools, at concerts, at nightclubs, at malls, at workplaces, at churches, you name it. Violence. Wherever people gather, violence has found a way in. And it seems to me, because it's true, that as soon as another incident like this happens, that people start fighting with each other then about why it's happening. And we all have our opinions, every single one of us. Is it too much guns? Is it not enough God? Is it because God is punishing us as a country? And whatever your opinion is, you get to have that opinion. But none of our opinions change the immense grief that so many families are going through today. Those feelings that swirl around us at times like this are overwhelming. Anger, sadness, disbelief. Worst of all, the feeling of complete inevitability that we're going to hear this story again sometime in the future, probably soon. And there'll be more lives lost. And we worry. We worry for ourselves. We worry for our friends. We worry for our children, our grandchildren. It isn't easy to preach on weeks like this. Because what we need is a word of hope. And sometimes hope seems so slim. Sometimes God seems so silent. I know God isn't, but sometimes it seems that way. And sometimes I don't want to look for the silver lining. Sometimes I don't want to be talking about the heroes in the midst of the tragedy or be talking about all the good that happened, even in spite of the tragedy. I just want to mourn the unspeakable loss. I just want to cry. This was a hurricane of brokenness that we don't begin to understand. But you can't end a sermon there. So what can we do? Well, being together here, it's a good start. At times when God seems silent coming together for worship, it can feel like we're going through the motions, but it's amazing how when we are together, the Spirit can move and healing can begin. 
And when we're here, we get to focus on God's word and we get to think about people like St. Paul and St. Francis. And we think about ways that in our own ways, we can live our lives like that too. Let go of the things that are shallow and meaningless. Too many possessions. Worries about status and popularity. Let go of anything that causes harm to others or to ourselves. What else can we do? We can pray. And please, please, please don't think that is a small thing. We do it for the world, but we do it for ourselves too. We pray. Because that is one of the surest ways for God's peace to even have a chance at penetrating our hearts. What else can we do? Well, lamenting and crying. It's important. We need to mourn. We need to be angry when things like this happen. But then don't leave it there. We let that emotion spur us on to something greater. What can you do now? What can we do now to be the change that our world needs to see? What do you need to do? Write letters to your congressperson. Do you need to practice more random acts of kindness? How can each of us do our small part to promote peace? Yeah, by last Tuesday, I was pretty much, I was pretty much angry at the whole world. I wasn't the person you wanted to be around. Not only had Las Vegas happened, but then Tom Petty died. And I still had to come up with some kind of hopeful message for the end of the week. But you know what? God gave that message to me. That message of hope. I was going to announce this earlier, um, but mo many of you know that Travis and Heather Pender had their baby, a baby boy, Archer. And they invited me to come and to meet him at the hospital. And and as I held him, I remembered that in spite of all the bad that can and does happen, in spite of how desperately weary I get of it, you get of it, in spite of everything, hope breaks in. God's goodness and peace and promise, it's still here. It's still all around, even in the darkest times. So what can we do? I recommend holding babies. That helps a lot. <laughs> so sisters and brothers, take the time you need to mourn. And then remember that God is with you and do what you can to contribute to the good. Stand up to the darkness. Don't back down. As Tom Petty would say, I'll stand my ground. I won't be turned around. I'll keep this world from dragging me down. I'm going to stand my ground. I won't back down. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
pray the offering prayer? Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Restore what is broken in your church, loving God. Heal divisions among Christian communities. Give courage to leaders facing hardship. And open our ears to the prophets' cries among us. Hear us, O God. Restore what is broken in creation, gracious God. Revive farmlands and vineyards. Protect waters needed by all living things and move us to care for this earthly home. Hear us, O oh God. Restore what is broken in our world, mighty God. Quell the rush to violence between peoples and nations. Break down dividing walls and promote growth for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O oh God. Restore our broken bodies, O oh God. We pray for those suffering any loss the grieving, those who have lost homes or property, the imprisoned, those neglected or abandoned, and the sick. Especially, Lord, we remember in our prayers Lydia, Howard and Carmen, Jessica, Rosie, Eric, Bob, Keith, Jack, Bevan Rollin, David, Kurt, Pearl, Craig, Lucille, Matthew, Pam, Michael, Val, Deb, Caleb, Florence, Bodie and family, Carol, Doug and David, Chris, Kurt, Mary, Becky, Sean, Dana, Bob, Connie, Alex, Carol, Karen, Carol, Irene, Benny and Iola, Tom, Connie, Ron, Jared, Ray, Norma, Muriel. We pray for the, the family and friends of all those who lost their lives in Las Vegas. We pray for all those who are ex experiencing hurricanes now and recently. Hear us, O oh God. Restore our faith in you, saving God. We pray for Bible study and small group leaders, Sunday school teachers, musicians, devotion writers, and for all whose work nurtures our faith. Hear us, O oh God. We remember the saints whose devotion proclaimed your saving help in company with them. Root us firmly in your everlasting love. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of the Spirit as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The benediction is printed in your bulletin, and I invite you to share in this with me. May God give you grace never to sell yourself short, grace to risk something big for something good, and grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us now and remain with us this day and always. Amen. We sing Precious Lord.
We go in peace to love and serve the Lord.